Call to order, regular meeting. Town of Florence Planning and Zoning Commission. Today is May 21st and the time is 618. Mr. Harmon, will you take the roll? Yes, sir. Chairman Pronzo. Present. Vice Chair Frost. Present. Commissioner Smith. No response. Commissioner Simmons. Present. Commissioner Prow. Not yet. We will listen for him. We have Mr. a quorum. Chairman, we have a quorum. I'd like Thank to note very quickly because of the quorum, sir, um, if the representative for the church does get online, it'll take a majority um, uh, to pass that, which means at least three confirmatives. With Mr. Schmidt absent, Commissioner Prow will have to abstain as he has a conflict of interest as a member of the church. All right. Okay, Pledge of Allegiance. Anybody's got a flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, discussion, approval, disapproval of the minutes of the regular meeting conducted on February 20, 2020. I'll open up to the commissioners. Any comments? Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the regular meeting minutes conducted on February 20th, 2020, as shown in our packet. I will second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. New business. Oh, hold on just a moment. Okay. Commissioner, is that you? This is Dwayne Prue. Commissioner, I just, I think I'm online with you now. I think everyone- Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we can hear you. All right. All sorry, right. To, sorry to interrupt, uh, Commissioner Pranza. I just had to get him in the meeting. That's fine. Okay. All right, under new business, presentation, approval, disapproval of a preliminary plat application for Anthem at Merrill Ranch, Unit 62. This is PZ-20-16, submitted by Pulte Homes. Do we have a presentation? Chairman, we have a short presentation on each unit. Ms. Benitez? Chairman Pronto, members of the commission, the first unit is 62. It is located on the Sun City side of Anthem Merrill Ranch. It'll be approximately 53.1897 acres. It is west of Felix Road and south of Unit 68. It'll have 140 single family residential lots, which comes to 2.63 dwelling units per acre. It will have 21.49 acres dedicated to open space. Its first access point will be from just west from Felix Road. And then another will be through a tract that cuts through the golf course and goes into unit 68. Those are the two access points. That concludes my Short presentation, staff finds that all of these, that the preliminary plat is in conformance and it has recommendations that are found in the packet. Thank you, Ms. Benitez. I'll open up to the commission for questions, comments. I, I have uh, a chairman. Uh, I have a, I have just a one question. This is Chair, um, Commissioner uh, Prue. Uh, 
when I'm looking at the plan, at the plan, I, I only see one point of access and egress. I, I must be missing something. There's supposed to be two: one egress and ingress and egress. And I, when I was looking at that plan, I, I only saw one. Is that? Am I looking at it wrong? In the plan, it will show one. In the staff report, we have pictures that show the second easement on the second page of that staff report for unit 62. It shows it going through tract B, cutting through the golf course and entering into unit 68. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just Commissioner Frost? Yes. Larry, uh, just the, the first one is a comment that I think it would apply to all plats. Um, I, in note four, it talks about stormwater retention. And it basically says stormwater is required, is required by the drainage ordinance shall be met and overall gross retention detention volume shall not be changed without order, uh, without approval from the town. Um, I think it's it's fairly common for plats to say some sort of language that they'll function correctly, and if not, they'll be corrected. Like they'll drain within 36 hours, that type of thing. And I think it's pretty common plat language to see that. So I I think we should consider that for future plats. Ed, where do you or where are you suggesting that be entered in? I'm I'm not seeing where. It's the general notes. Oh, on the plat. Yes, yes. Okay, all right. It typically, some language like that typically appears as one of the general notes on all plats that I've seen in, in previous, my previous life. It, so it puts them on the hook so if those things don't drain like they're supposed to, they're on the hook to fix them and make them right. Right. Uh, my, my Vice Chair Frost, uh, we have Jared Baxter actually on the line also, and so I'm sure certainly heard your comment. I think that's Commissioner Frost, I do recognize where you, what you're talking about in that location. Uh, we, we, I believe that note does exist on the final plats. It's similar to what you're saying, other than it says uh, drainage facilities will work per town code and ordinance, which I think the town code and ordinance does specify drain within 36 hours, et cetera, et cetera. But we can leave that as a stipulation to the pre-plat approval. I, I don't have any problem with that. That is how we design the drainage facilities and all the and all the parcels out at Anthem and Merrill Ranch. So, uh, adding that note or adding that stipulation to the approval would not inhibit us uh, in our ability to do the design work that's needed on it. Thank you. That's that answers my question, Larry. I think we should look for that on on all future plats, not only for this development, for, but for everybody that comes in. My my second comment is on sheet. 9 of 11. And on that sheet are the, are the basically two of the cul-de-sacs that appear in this development. One is called Shiny Cock, but here it's labeled drive, and I think it's typical for, for the town to lay, label dead-end cul-de-sacs as courts. Correct. Correct. He should be court. Commissioner Frost. Fine. And that, those were my two comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Frost. Any other comments? Can I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we will that we approve um, the preliminary plat application for Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 62, uh, PZ 20-16, uh, with, uh, with the comments as submitted by staff. And, and the stipulation made today. And the stipulation made today, yes. Do I have a second? I'll second. So we have Commissioner Simmons, second by Commissioner Frost. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried.
Moving on. Presentation, approval, disapproval of preliminary plat application for Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 70. This is PZ-20-17, submitted by Pulte Homes. Ms. Benitez, do we have a presentation? Yes, we do, Chairman. Preliminary plat unit 70 for Anthem at Merrill Ranch is also located in Sun City. It is approximately 38.1304 acres. The subject site is north of unit 68 and just west of Felix Road in unit 72. The plat, the pre-plat includes 145 single family lots and will have 3.80 dwelling units per acre. Two access points, one coming from Unit 72 and the other from Sun City Boulevard. We'll also have 9.11 acres dedicated to open space. That concludes my presentation, Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Benitez. I'll open it up to the commission for questions, comments. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple. Vice Chairman Frost. And uh, this refers to um, sheets three of nine and sheet um, four of nine. And in particular, the um, 60 foot El Paso natural gas easement along the north side of this development and then down through the west side of this development. Um, I, I know El Paso natural gas is the high pressure distribution gas system. Um, how are we accounting for this type of an easement through the middle of these residential lots? Oh. Um, Mr. Chairman. I, yeah, I would defer to uh, Mr. Baxter on this. Uh, Commissioner Frost, uh, this is Jared Baxter. Uh, those easements currently exist. Nothing is occupied in those easements at this point in time. There is no connection of these easements to any other easements. Uh, it's basically an easement holder that El Paso Gas, Natural Gas has. We are working with them as far as abandoning those easements prior to final platting these uh, subdivisions in this area, but there is currently nothing planned or proposed in those easements. So basically our old easements from the 50s and 60s that were put in place as a placeholder, but there is no intention of placing natural high pressure gas lines in those air easements. Um, they were all set up prior to the development uh, obviously, El Paso Natural Gas would rather their lines be in roadways and other right-of-ways, according to that. But until they are abandoned, we kept them on the plat, and they should be abandoned prior to recreation of a final plat. Okay, so we can stipulate that, and you're okay with that, Mr. Baxter? I would think that, yes, that would be okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my second comment relates to the retention basin in the far north eastern, I'm sorry, northwestern corner of the development. And it's the comment that you've heard me made and preached many, many times where we're hiding a retention basin from the police officers that are patrolling the area. Well, Jerry, I don't know if you have any comments about that or what your thoughts were. Well, and, and just, go ahead and just, there. Just, just similar comments that we've had before. I mean, the, the way that the Sun City is set up, uh, basically, there are no walls for the majority of Sun City in this area. There'll be a perimeter wall that's obviously on the outside of Track E. I believe it's Track E that you're talking about, Commissioner Frost. Let me confirm that to begin with. And the Track E on the northwest corner, um, if I'm looking at page... Yes, you're correct. Uh, three of nine, it's track D, easement on that. Um, it's, it's basically, yes, it's it's a back behind that area and is potential for a retention basin right now. 
Um, I, I've noted your, your comments before on this situation. It's something that's been laid out previously from years past. Um, as far as we uh, have developed in the past, we have never found any issues with this, especially with the open wall concept that is in play in Sun City Boulevard. Uh, as far as people getting back there and doing nefarious activities, um, you know, we haven't had that kind of an issue here in the, the community, but uh, your comment is noted at this point. Yeah, I, I actually worked very close to the police department and, and took this down and visited with um, the chief of police and one of his lieutenants and his one of his administrators today. And uh, um, the chief of police was, was not at all happy with this and it intends to speak with um, Chris and with Brent tomorrow about it. Um, so I, I guess I'm just kind of putting you on notice that this, this um, should be the last time. Um, if it happens again, I think I'm going to really dig in my heels and I think the police chief is as well. Are there any other questions or comments? I have a question about the, the abandoning the easement. Did you say that the easement is scheduled to be abandoned, but it's not abandoned yet? Yes, correct. It currently exists. It has existed since the 50s, I think. As a placeholder, prior to any kind of master planning out in this area, you know, El Paso Natural Gas obviously would want to put their, their um, gas lines in right-of-ways where it's easily accessible by them. Uh, we presented it to them and shown them that the right-of-way of obviously Sun City Boulevard and Felix Road provides that connectivity. The weird thing even about these easements is they don't connect up to anything. They, they're just for section line, basically easements along section lines. And as far as connectivity to any other facilities, there's massive gaps in there. So it's it's kind of a, I'm guessing it was a placeholder that they took back in the days when all this was just straight farm ground at that point in time to hold it as a placeholder in case they needed in the future. Uh, the intent would be for them to put it in roadways, in Felix Road or in Sun City Boulevard as necessary. But currently they have no plans of putting a high pressure gas. They've already got one down Felix Road that they placed at the beginning of the development uh, and don't anticipate putting any kind of high pressure gas through this existing I understand. Um, I need you to understand that I'm super sensitive to this, uh, considering all of the litigation that has taken place with the mine. Um, Correct. Points to this kind of, gee, we thought it was abandoned, but it's not abandoned thing. Um, gets us in trouble pretty quick. So, um, do we have any adding that, as a, adding that as a stipulation to the approval prior to recordation of a final plat, uh, the easement shall be abandoned. It will not be a problem for the developer in this point in time. He he needs it abandoned also so he can sell those lots. It'd very good. That's, for him. that's exactly where I was going. Okay, then I will ask for a motion. All right, I'll move. I'll I'll move that we approve uh, Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit Seventy PZ Twenty Seventeen with the stipulation that the easement be abandoned prior to final plat and any and all stipulations made by staff. Do I have a second? I will second. Was that you, Mr. Simmons? Yes, it was. Okay. I have movement by Chairman Pranzo Second by Commissioner Simmons. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? 
Motion carried. Moving on. Presentation, approval, disapproval of a design review application. PZ, no, I'm sorry, wrong line. Uh, presentation, approval, disapproval of a preliminary plat application for Anthem at Merrill Ranch, Unit 72, PZ 2018, submitted by Pulte Homes. Ms. Benitez, you're on stage. All right. Last presentation for the preliminary plat. This is Unit 72 for Anthem of Merrill Ranch. It is also in Sun City portion. It will be con approximately 41.1533 acres. It is west of Felix Road and is just north of Unit 68 and east of Unit 70. There will be 140, 154 single family residential lots with 3.74 dwelling units per acre. It'll be approximately 9.40 acres dedicated to open space. There will be an access point from Sun City Boulevard and another from Unit 70. We found that the proposed preliminary plot was in conformance with the PUD and town requirements. Chairman Pranzo, fellow commissioner. Thank you, Ms. Benitez. I'll open it up to the commission. Questions, comments? Chairman Pronzo, um, same, same comment, same concern, and ask for the same stipulation about the El Paso natural gas easement on the north side of this development. So noted. Any other questions or comments? Then can I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that for um, approval of the preliminary plat for Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 72 PZ-20-18 as submitted with the stipulation that the El Paso natural gas easement be um, reconciled and uh, dealt with prior to final plat. Well, I would like to use the word abandoned. Abandoned. I, I concur and will change my motion. Thank you, sir. Do I have a second? I'll second it. This is uh, Mr. Pro. Yes, thought you might like to hear my voice. <laughs> okay, I have a motion by Vice Chair Frost, second by Commissioner Pru. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Moving on. Presentation approval, disapproval of a design review application, PZ 2020, for the Desert Rock Church New Worship Center located at 9230 West Franklin Road, Florence, Arizona. Ms. Benitez, do we have a presentation? Mar, are you there? Does anybody hear me? I hear you. Good. I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Have Sorry. Lost? Okay, there you are. Can you hear me? I'll do a short presentation for this design review. Although I did receive word from Pastor Joey that he was trying to get on the Zoom meeting and had the wrong number. Mari, he's here. He just, oh. He just he just needs to unmute. Okay, perfect. Good. All right, for a presentation, we have a design review application from the Desert Rock Church for the new worship center located at 9230 West Franklin Road. The church itself was approved for a conditional use permit on the site. It'll be a one-story building that's 5,040 square feet total and 22 feet and a half inch tall. There's, of course, the modular building just to the north. 
and that is already in existence. It will be used on site for assembly, the main building, connected to your staff reports. We have parking, which comes and meets to code. Landscaping. The design of the church includes four different colors, which is a, can, found, can be found in Exhibit E. Chairman and members of the commission, there was no public participation required by the Arizona state statute or the design review process. And staff finds the request complies with all applicable town codes and keeps in character with the area. We hope to, for the commission to move to approve with the following conditions listed in the staff report. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Benitez. I'll open it up to the commission. Questions, comments? Mr. Chairman, uh, Dwayne Pru, uh, since I am a member of this church, I find that uh, necessary to recuse myself from this vote. So noted. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is just, um, um, well, I'll, I'll just spill it out. Um, I noted, um, Pastor, on your landscape palette that you have six sisu trees and i note that they're planted in close proximity to structures and with their invasive root structure that tends to heave things um, i just a word of warning they they will do damage they're a, they're a beautiful tree but their root system is very destructive so i just throwing that out for your thought if that's helpful or not but i have you know i'm not i'm, I'm not standing against this at all so Thank you very much. Um, yes, we, we'll let our uh, architect know that we can change those to something else. Um, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, uh, Larry Harmer. Um, Pastor Joey, just keep in mind when you transfer that information that the town does um, strongly recommend that we stay with the AWR, the, the Arizona Department of Water Resources, recommended palette of uh, landscape materials. Uh, it benefits you in the long run because they are all low water usage. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I have silence on the line. Can I ask for a motion? Mr. Chairman, I will move um, approval of design, re design review application PZ-20-20 for the Desert Rock Church New Worship Center with conditions as presented by staff. Do I have a second? I will second the motion. So I have a motion by Vice Commissioner Frost, second by Commissioner Simmons. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Congratulations, Pastor Joey. Thank you. Okay, presentations. General plan update. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I'll try to keep this brief and painless. Please. Um, the general plan is moving along. Uh, they're in the first phase of, of the process itself which is primarily the data gathering and community assessment. This is all done prior to initiating any uh, meaningful work on land use plan or public meetings or anything like that. Uh, we are basically on schedule. The uh, COVID-19 precautions have not hindered the progress at this point. Um, so we haven't missed any prescribed meetings or anything at this, at this particular time. Uh, depending on how soon some of these precautions are relaxed further that they can be public meetings with social distancing, etc. We will establish the calendar necessary to keep this moving. But at this point, we don't see any particular delay 
uh, caused by the precautions. We weren't anticipating public meetings before the late summer or fall anyway. So right now we are on schedule and on budget and moving forward. Um, the redevelopment plan, if you would like, I'll move ahead to that. Uh, we did have a very fruitful public meeting a couple months ago, and that work now is progressing into what would be considered a hard draft of the document that will be put out for um, uh, public scrutiny. Um, there is also in development an interactive web page that we'll be putting up online for review that will allow people to actually peruse the plan and depending on if they're interested in the housing portions or commercial portions, they'll be able to uh, transition from page to page with various recommendations and it, it'll become very interactive. That's in development also. Um, we are still on schedule for that project. Uh, we are going to be coming up on some uh, pressure for public meetings, but again, we're waiting to see how the precautions move. Um, future agenda items, information only. Uh, we do have a text, a zoning text amendment uh, that's on hold right now. Uh, we're trying to sort out the best way to handle it since it will be a prescribed public hearing and there'll be significant notification um, necessary and potential of public input. And we are work, trying to work out a smooth system on proceeding with that with the town clerk's office. Um, second, we have an application for a major general plan amendment. Uh, next week, we will be distributing uh, the information of that um, application to yourselves. The council will have it uh, next week in their packet and will be a brief presentation to them on June uh, 1st. Plus, we'll be sending out the 60-day um, review papers to all of the various agencies and uh, other communities that are on our contact list. This general plan amendment, in a nutshell, is for a um, approximately 360-acre uh, recreational facility that will include um, professional level sports, training, rehabilitation, um, uh, what you might call a camp, summer camp, not even summer camps, but year-round camps for different types of athletic um, uh, practice and training. It is going to be associated with, uh, at this point, I understand two universities, as well as the possibility of some professional sports franchise. So it will be a, a very significant project for the community. It does lie at the northern end of our planning area and will include an annexation of property. Uh, that process, uh, we're waiting for that application to be submitted here very shortly so that we can proceed with it. Um, the uh, investors at this point, we understand, are a mix of Major League Baseball and NBA players um, as well as private monies. So you'll be seeing information on that sometime later next week. That will conclude our um, report at this time. Great. Thank you, Larry. Did, were you also talking about the redevelopment plan? Yeah, I did. I mentioned that briefly. That's the, the interactive okay, quiz that will and be And then the future agenda you. items. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, right. Call it a public. We don't have public online, do we? Uh, no, you do not. I did not receive any emails as well for comments. Okay, then we have opened and closed the call to the public. Um, I seem to be missing a page here. To be called you know, to the commission, sir? Yes, thank you. Um, Call to the commission, current events only, please. Nothing from me. Nothing from me. Nothing from me either. Well, seeing how I've been sitting at home for two months, I guess there's nothing for me either. Uh, <laughs> can, I, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman, that we adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. Was that Commissioner Frost? Yes. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Pro, second by Commissioner Frost. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those against?
<laughs> and I guess mm -hmm. the motion carries.